The first thing you'll need is a particle video clip. These are quite easy to find, and you just have to go onto a free stock website like Pixabay to find them. Once you have your particle clip, drag it onto your timeline above the video clip you want the effect on. Extend or shorten the clip so it's the same duration as your video. Now, with the particle clip highlighted, go over to Opacity and change the Blend Mode to Screen. This will overlay the particles onto your video. Now go over to Effects and type in Tint and drag it on top of the particle video clip. If you go over, you can change the color of the particles by clicking on the Map White 2 and changing it to a color you prefer. To really enhance our particles, we're going to add the Find Edges effect. Go over to Effects, type in Find Edges, and drag it on top of your particle clip. Now you just have to go over to Effects Controls, and under Find Edges, check off the Invert box. There you have it. Easy particle effect on your video. Before we get started, please note that this effect works best if you set the image duration to between 4 and 10 seconds. The first thing you'll want to do is increase the scale of your image to 120. This is necessary because the effect requires the background to recede. If you leave the scale to 100, the background will have nowhere to go and just fall into a black frame. Now duplicate your image by holding Alt and clicking and dragging above. Highlight the duplicated image and go over to Opacity, Click the pen tool and start tracing around the image in the foreground until you go all the way around and click back to the start to complete the trace. Now make sure you're at the start of the image on the timeline and click the scale stopwatch icon and move the slider to the end of the image and change the value to 140. Now highlight the original image and from the start of the image, click the scale stopwatch icon, move the slider to the end of the image and change this value to 100. Our basic effect is complete but we're still not done. We have this ugly outline from our mask showing through, so let's touch it up a bit. Increase the feathering of the mask to about 75, and the mask expansion to 25. The exact amount will vary depending on the object and how closely you trace the outline of your image. Create an adjustment layer by right-clicking in the project panel, then go to New, and then Adjustment Layer. You can accept the default settings for this and hit OK. Now click and drag your new layer above your video clip you want the effect on. Go over to Effects, type in Transform, and drag it on top of our new adjustment layer. Now, under Effects Controls, go to Motion and uncheck the Uniform Scale option, and change the scale height to 150, Width to 30, and Rotation to 25. Go down under Transform and change the scale to 130. Now we have to animate our glass bar. With your adjustment layer still highlighted, move the slider to the beginning of the clip. Now go over and click the stopwatch icon under Motion and then Position, and lower the value of the first number until the effect just disappears on our screen. Move the slider to the end of the adjustment layer and increase the value back up until the animation goes all the way to the right of our screen and then disappears again. Now duplicate the adjustment layer twice by holding Alt and clicking and dragging above. Now you have a very professional looking glass bar effect inside your video. First, you'll want to find the part of the clip you want the effect on. For my video, it's when the biker is at the apex of their jump. Now you'll want to zoom way in because we want to be making fine adjustments on our timeline. Right click the video and click Insert Frame Hold Segment. Now make a cut every third frame until you have eight total frames, and then delete the rest of the frame hold segment. Now pull your video against the eight segments you just created. Go over to Effects and type in Strobe Light, and starting from the beginning of the eight new segments, place the strobe effect on every second segment. You'll also want to go in and change the strobe operator to Difference on each of the strobe clips. This will make the strobe transparent and add an exaggerated effect to our flashing freeze frame. The first step in achieving this effect is to have two video clips. It helps if they tie into each other, like my two clips both containing a white car. 
Choose where you want the luma fade to occur. Then, take your second clip and drag it above the first so it overlaps like this. Now go to Effects and type in Gradient Wipe and drag it on top of the clip you just moved. Now make sure you're at the start of the clip on the preview window and go over to Effects Controls and under Gradient Wipe, click the stopwatch icon under Transition Completion and change it to 100%. Now move your timeline ahead about 1 to 2 seconds and change the transition completion back to 0%. In 1982, one of the most iconic movies to ever hit the big screen was released. Thankfully, it's the future now, so we can create these effects inside Premiere Pro. The first step in recreating our Tron movie is adding the Fine Edge video effect to our video. Search for it and drag it on top of your video clip. Under Effects Controls, go over and check off the Invert setting. This will make your video mostly black. Next, we want to add the Tint effect. Search for it and drag it on top of your video as well. Go over to the Tint settings and under Map White 2, click the color and change it to a nice Tron-like blue color like mine. Finally, we want to add the final effect, VR Glow. Once again, search for it and drag it on top of your video. Under the VR Glow settings, you'll want the Luma Threshold between 0 and 0 0.20, and Glow Brightness between 2 and 3. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Hope I was able to bring a little bit of 80s back into your life today. So I have my two clips I want the transition effect on. The first thing we need is an adjustment layer. You can create it by going over to the project panel, right clicking new item, adjustment layer, and drag it above where the two video clips intersect. Starting in the center of the two clips, hold shift and hit the left arrow key once and pull the extra layer back to the cursor. Now do the same for the right side, hold shift and push right three times and drag the extra back. We do this so the first video is five frames behind and the second video is 10 frames ahead. Now that our adjustment layer is the correct length, go over to Effects and type in Offset and drag it on top of your adjustment layer. Position your cursor at the beginning of the layer and go over to Shift Center 2 and create a keyframe. Now drag the cursor to the end of the layer and change the value of Shift Center to negative 960. This will create another keyframe. The base effect is done, but it doesn't look very good, so let's add the final effect. Go over to Effects and type in Directional Blur and drag it on top of your adjustment layer. Now go over and change the blur length to 50 and the direction to 90 and you're done. Easy Side Pan Blur Transition Effect. This effect works best with a fast moving subject and a background that remains unchanged. Your first step is to duplicate the clip you want the effect on. Do this by holding Alt and clicking and dragging the clip above the original. Now right click the newly duplicated clip and go to speed slash duration and change this value to 95. You'll need to play around with this for your specific clip. Now pick a spot where you want the effect to begin and click and drag the duplicated clip to that spot. Now choose where you want it to end and do the same thing. With the duplicated clip still highlighted, go over to opacity under effects controls and change the value to 50% and change the blend mode to lighten. We also want to smooth out the start and end of our ghost effect. Go over to effects and type in cross dissolve and drag it to the start and end of your duplicated clip. Now that we've created our base effect, it looks all right, but let's step it up a little and give it a more professional cinematic feel. Go over to effects and type in Gaussian blur and drag this on top of your duplicated ghost clip. Now under Effects Controls, change the blurriness to 25. Now your ghost effect should have a much more cinematic and professional look to it. First thing you need is a video clip. So here I have a video of a cow walking in a field. Head on over to Effects and type in Mosaic and drag it on top of your video clip. Now our video has turned all blocky and pixelated so we want to bring this more in line with the Minecraft world. Go over to Effects Controls, 
and under Mosaic, change the value of horizontal and vertical blocks to 125. The next thing we want to do is enhance this effect. Go over and type in Posturize under Effects and drag it on top of your video clip. Now, back under Effects Controls, change the value of Level to 13. This will give it a more computerized rendering feel. For this effect to work properly, your sequence should be set to 1920 by 1080 and your video clip should be 4K. This is because for the effect to work, we need the extra frame space inside our sequence. So here is my deflated soccer ball in an abandoned subway. Depending on if your clip is zooming in or out, it will change how you place the keyframes and scales. Since my ball is zooming in, we need to use the scale to zoom out. From the start of the video clip, set the scale to 100 and click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Now click the position stopwatch icon and center your subject. This will create another keyframe. Now move the timeline slider to the end of the video clip and change the scale to 50 and reposition your frame so the black border disappears completely. Now you can make anyone dizzy with the vertical effect in your videos.